good morning students we have covered over unit 1 the topics that we have covered in over unit 1 is introduction to enterprise application and their types software engineering methodologies which include various methodologies like waterfall agile rational unified process prototype then is life cycle of raising an enterprise application introduction to skills required to both build an enterprise application then key determinants of successful enterprise application and measuring the success of enterprise application these are all the topics which is under unit 1 that we have covered so far firstly i will give you a brief view of previous lecture then we will proceed with the unit 1 in the previous lecture we covered life cycle of an of raising an enterprise application in the life cycle it included the various stages or phases first is the incepting which include the analysis and business modeling activities the engineering requirements that are required then plan and project estimation that is brief if i say that all the requirement gathering and planning analysis happened in the incepting phase then comes the architecting and designing phase which includes life cycle of building an enterprise application it includes the key inputs for enterprise architecture that means all the designing are included in this stage then is constructing to construct an enterprise application we require some coding which includes coding as well as unit testing is also performed in this stage then code review and analysis is carried out in this phase in the testing we include various type of testing except the unit testing in the life cycle of enterprise application then rolling out that means launching out of the product when the product will be get ready this was in the life cycle then code review when your code will become ready in the constructing phase then there is a code review technique which also include two types one is informal other is formal formal include over the shoulder email pass around peer programming and formal include formal inspection and tool assisted over the shoulder that means a casual go through by your code by any person from your team and find out the error in email pass around you will send your code via email for your code review and in the peer programming you will work in a team of one or more and there is a review in that part then in the formal inspection a uh, one outside team will visit at your organization and will find out is there any error or any flaw in your code then there is a tool assisted by using certain inbuilt tools you can find out any type of mistake error or flaw in your code these are in detail what are the code review techniques the stakeholders under the stakeholders we include various categories as there are different stages under different stage we are having different stakeholders stakeholder means a person but in technical term is in business term in enterprise term we use the it term stakeholder stakeholder include in the incepting phase is the sponsors and customers who initiate the process then in the architecting and designing phase we include data architect integration architect and various other architects like solution and application architect in the constructor phase construction phase we include the programmers in the testing phase we include the testing team which is having performance testing team application testing technique it will depend upon which testing is going to be performed then team will be assigned with that name then is rolled out phase it include all the releasing team or marketing team which included in this phase this is the pictorial view of your raising an enterprise application then what are the skills required 
to build an enterprise application is knowledge of organizational dynamics to main knowledge you must have the other is business analysis skills then program management skills then architecting and designing skills then programming skills then testing skills and knowledge of tools then comes the key determinants which includes business case readiness strategy to execute and ex excellence in execution how you measure the success of enterprise application that whether your application is successful or not whether it is effective it is having effective solution it giving it is giving a quality product it is according to your cost time and budget and uh, it is according to the requirement of the customer then come with the erp erp means a heart of your uh, whole enterprise or whole database where all the departments will be get concerned at a central level that is um, the way by which your erp system work uh, having one central database and other departments like sales and delivery application reporting application financial application it will depend upon an enterprise which type of application one enterprise is having if we are concerned with our college then we may say that we are having some account section is there some placement section is there some training section is there some examination section is there we are having different departments all departments are concerned with a single place all are having one database then we may say that one database where all the department are concerned is called central database it will depend upon an enterprise that which type of application one enterprise is having this is the framework uh if you are not going to follow any erp then whole the system will be like mess you won't be able to get the knowledge of one department so you have to be at central database so that other department must know what's going in one particular department this is after erp like we are having one central database and other departments are approaching to central database for further processing these are the differences if your system will work before erp and after erp then these are the important modules one erp should have these are the illustration of your modules then some major challenges your er in your erp system then benefits we are having internal benefit external benefit direct benefits as well as indirect benefits then crm system in crm system we were having customer relationship management we will make a record of the customer and make it available to the other departments so that it may enhance the publicity of your enterprise by interacting with the customer from time to time if any new approaches is in your enterprise then they will come in contact with the customer by having their databases this is the definition of crm system then we will come to the software ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning, an industry standard term that wait a minute, let's not go there. ERP at its essence is a tool for managing information. Okay, so Where ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning, an industry standard term that, wait a minute, let's not go there. ERP at its essence is a tool for managing information. Okay, so what is managing information all about? Here's a definition we like. Information management is the organized collection, storage and use of information for the benefit of an enterprise. So how do you organize information in your company? 
I bet you have a customer database or CRM and something managing your orders or warehouse, an accounting system and then you're probably filling gaps in your information pipeline with spreadsheets and manual processes. But none of these talk to each other, they don't share data. It's what people call islands of information which impacts efficiency and let's face it, efficiency is connected to time and money. So here is where an ERP system helps you. The ERP centralizes all the information in your organization and by doing this, you are able to streamline the flow of information. All your business processes become connected end to end. And now other things become easier. You have a single view of your customer so you can provide better service. Your team works more efficiently because they have the information they need when they need it. And when you want to analyze your information, since it's all in the same place, you can report on it any way you want. So this is what your ERP does for you. In today's terms, we decided to stick another word at the front, modern ERP. Because centralizing and managing your information seamlessly is just the beginning. Modern ERP allows you to do so much more, like connect to your customers better through a portal, link to modern communication tools like Exchange 365 for your email or Power BI for business intelligence. Modern ERP can speak the same language as your supplier's systems, things like EDI. Modern ERP is flexible, mobile, cloud, secure and much more. Here at Arcus, we've been working with ERP for over 25 years. We hope you found this short video informative and feel free to... ये है दीपक। दीपक की अपनी फार्मास्यूटिकल रिटेल शॉप है और इसे रन करना बिल्कुल भी इजी नहीं है। दीपक बहुत से चैलेंजेस फेस करते हैं। सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम दीपक तब फेस करते हैं जब वो अपने सप्लायर्स को ऑर्डर प्लेस करते हैं। ये अपने डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स को कॉल करने और मेडिसिंस की इनफॉरमेशन लेने में बिजी रहते हैं। इनके पास अपने डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स के बीच रेट्स और स्कीम्स कंपेयर करने का कोई साधन नहीं है। कभी कबार उन्हें अपने डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स के पास विजिट करना पड़ता है, क्राउड में सफर करना पड़ता है, लॉन्ग इन सब के बावजूद वो सारे रिक्वायर्ड प्रोडक्ट्स परचेज नहीं कर पाते जिनकी वजह से उन्हें स्टॉक शॉर्टेज फेस करना पड़ता है दीपक को परचेज ऑर्डर देने के लिए अपने डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स के सेल्समैन पर डिपेंडेंट होना पड़ता है दीपक को अपने कस्टमर्स के प्रिस्क्रिप्शन डेट से अपडेट रहना भी डिफिकल्ट लगता है मिलिए शर्मा जी से जो के दीपक के एक पुराने कस्टमर हैं ये एक डायबिटिक पेशेंट हैं और इन्हें प्रिस्क्राइब टाइम पर ही रेगुलर मेडिसिन लेनी होती है। एक दिन शर्मा जी के पास मेडिसिन खत्म हो गई, जिससे उनकी हेल्थ पे इफेक्ट हुआ। और बाद में उन्हें किसी और मेडिसिन शॉप से प्रिस्क्राइब मेडिसिन लेनी पड़ी। दीपक के शर्मा जी की ही तरह बहुत कस्टमर्स हैं, जिन्हें उनकी प्रिस्क्रिप्शन दीपक के पास परचेज ट्रैकिंग ना होने की वजह से वो स्मार्ट परचेज डिसीजंस लेने में भी असफल रहता है। दीपक याद नहीं रख पाते कि उन्होंने कितने प्राइस और डिस्काउंट पर परचेजिंग की थी और किस सप्लायर से की थी। जैसे जिस सप्लायर ने लास्ट परचेज पर 15 प्रतिशत डिस्काउंट दिया था, वो अब सेम बहुत सारे परचेज बिल्स होने की वजह से वो इस चेन से अवेयर नहीं हो पाते हैं और इस वजह से वो दूसरे सप्लायर से परचेज करने का चांस मिस कर देते हैं जो कि शायद बेटर डिस्काउंट्स दे रहे होंगे कई बार दीपक के पास उन प्रोडक्ट्स की शॉर्टेज हो जाती है जो डिमांड में होते हैं या कई बार उन प्रोडक्ट्स का दीपक अपने ब्रेकेज एंड एक्सपायरी प्रोडक्ट्स को ट्रैक नहीं कर पाते हैं और इस बात से दीपक बिल्कुल भी अवेयर नहीं है कि कौन से प्रोडक्ट्स एक्सपायरी डेट के नियर हैं और कौन से ब्रेकेज इन सब के अलावा दीपक को रीऑर्डर परचेज ऑर्डर्स एक्सपायरी स्टॉक मैनेजमेंट अकाउंट्स फाइल जीएसटी रिटर्न्स और बहुत सी चीजों का ध्यान रखना पड़ता है 
दीपक को अब रियलाइज हुआ कि उन्हें अपने बिजनेस के लिए लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी अडेप्ट करनी चाहिए और तब उन्हें मार्क ई के बारे में पता चला जो कि फार्मा रिटेल सॉफ्टवेयर है इंटीग्रेटेड विद मोबाइल एप्स अब जिस तरीके से दीपक अपना बिजनेस करते हैं उसे मार्क ई ने ट्रांसफॉर्म कर दिया अब मार्क ई ई बिजनेस ई रिटेल ऐप और वेब ब्राउजर के यूज से दीपक जो प्रोडक्ट ऑर्डर करना चाहते हैं, वो सर्च कर सकते हैं और किस सप्लायर के पास इस प्रोडक्ट का कितना स्टॉक है इसे लाइव देख सकते हैं वो सप्लायर स्टॉक स्टेटस स्टॉक अवेलेबिलिटी को लाइव देख सकते हैं स्कीम्स एंड रेट्स में कंपेयर कर सकते हैं और कन्वीनियंट वे में बेस्ट परचेज ऑर्डर प्लेस कर सकते हैं अब दीपक इजिली अपने कस्टमर्स की प्रिस्क्रिप्शन मेंटेन कर सकते हैं मार्क सॉफ्टवेयर में उस डॉक्टर की सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन फीड कर सकते हैं जिन्होंने मेडिसिन प्रिस्क्राइब की हैं और साथ ही रिमाइंडर सेट कर सकते हैं जिससे ये अपने कस्टमर्स को पेंडिंग प्रिस्क्रिप्शन इन्फॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं इस तरह दीपक अपने कस्टमर्स को मेडिसिन के बारे में पहले ऐसी रिमाइंड करवाते हैं और इससे पहले की उनके कस्टमर्स कहीं और जाए उन्हें मेडिसिन टाइम आरोप डिलीवर करवाते हैं अब दीपक को स्टॉक की शॉर्टेज फेस नहीं करनी पड़ती क्योंकि मार्क सॉफ्टवेयर में वो मेंशन कर देते हैं कि उन्हें प्रोडक्ट का स्टॉक मिनिमम और मैक्सिमम कितना चाहिए और सॉफ्टवेयर उन्हें इंडिकेट कर देता है जब भी स्टॉक लेवल मिनिमम लेवल से नीचे जाने वाला होता है या मैक्सिमम लेवल से ऊपर जाने वाला होता है तो इस तरह उन्हें कभी भी एक्सेस स्टॉक या लो स्टॉक फेस नहीं करना पड़ता मार्क के इंटेलिजेंट री सिस्टम से दीपक सही टाइम पर अपने सप्लायर्स को री प्लेस कर पाते हैं ताकि प्रोडक्ट्स सही टाइम पर बेचने के लिए अवेलेबल हों। दीपक अपने ब्रेकेज एंड एक्सपायरी स्टॉक को भी ट्रैक कर सकते हैं जो कि बहुत ज्यादा लॉस होने से दीपक को बचाते हैं अब वो बिल्ड प्रोडक्ट की परचेज हिस्ट्री के क्विक व्यू ऐसी अपने हर सप्लायर की परचेजेस को ट्रैक कर सकते हैं और साथ ही परचेज रिलेटेड रिपोर्ट व्यू कर सकते हैं तो मार्क ई फार्मास्यूटिकल रिटेल सेक्टर के लिए एक परफेक्ट सॉल्यूशन है जिसके कुछ यूनिक फीचर्स हैं, फास्ट बिलिंग काउंटर सेल मैनेजमेंट कोलैबोरेटिव कॉमर्स अपलोड इन बिटवीन रिटेलर्स एंड होलसेलर्स, इंटेलिजेंट प्रोडक्ट सर्च वाइल बिलिंग मैनेज पेशेंट रिकॉर्ड डॉक्टर्स कमीशन मैनेजमेंट स्पेशल अलर्ट वाइल हैंडलिंग नार्कोटिक एंड एच वन ड्रग्स Track wise inventory management, substitute availability findings, email or SMS, GST compliances, MIS reports, 1000 plus reports. Demo fix करने के लिए call कीजिए seven times nine three six four पर. Few years, the buying patterns of customers have changed quite a bit. The internet and social media have become major influences as well. Thousands and thousands of new marketing tools have come up to help companies use these opportunities to market better. But here's the problem. This has resulted in an explosion of tools. There are just too many. Multiple logins, user interfaces, customer data integrations, reporting, customer support, billing, account reps. Huh, it's so tiring. Juggling that many systems is also challenging and inefficient. The worst part is you still miss the end-to-end -end view of the customer and marketing, making it harder to measure ROI or efficiency. Should it be so complicated? No. We're introducing EngageBay, an integrated, simple-to-use, all-in-one marketing platform. EngageBay puts all proven marketing technologies in one place and is the right size for the needs of small businesses. It has SEO tools to optimize your website, run email marketing campaigns, create email sequences, and track customer behaviors, and design tools for creating beautiful forms and landing pages. You can also track customer analytics and social media marketing campaigns, all from one simple and easy to use platform. To fit the budgets of small businesses, we have made EngageBay super affordable. It costs less than $1 a day. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up for free today and experience the power of an all-in-one marketing platform. Jumpstart your marketing and grow your revenue. As there are certain softwares available in the market built in software that you can use as a demo version. As in the previous session, I as I uh, as I told you that uh, if you have to construct your prototype, you are having Proto IO. 
tool available uh, which you can use as a demo version similarly if you want to experience what is an erp system then there is also a demo version available as i have shown you in video that mark erp is one of the software built in software that one person will or one shopkeeper will just buy and use that the other is the crm system if you want to experience what is an er what is a crm system how it works then engagebay is one of the site where you can register yourself and experience your crm system like what different type of landing pages what kind of interface one a customer or enterprise should have all these type of reports can be generated by using that built in softwares now we will proceed with our next unit okay starting with your unit 2 the first topic is inception of enterprise application here we have studied life cycle of enterprise application where we have studied incepting phase under the incepting phase we said there is requirement analysis is there planning is there requirement validation is there similarly inception of enterprises includes all the activities like enterprise analysis business modeling requirement elicitation and analysis requirement validation planning and estimation here if i say there is enterprise analysis is there modeling is there then these are all the stages which are covered by different methodologies with the different name similarly in the inception phase we include analysis and validation whether the whatsoever we are going to find out from our requirement the requirement is valid or invalid then planning and estimation is there let's study in detail enterprise analysis in the enterprise analysis what we study it deals with why a system is required that is why is a given system needed then why does a given system need change if you are having some existing system and that existing system requires some changes that means requirements have been changed with the time then why we need to change it then why is it important to invest at this time that means it will also depend upon why we are going to change at a particular time whether it is a market trend that all the different enterprises are launching their product with some enhanced capabilities so we are going to change or some other reason is there that means what are the reasons behind it that we are going to make a new product or we are going to change in an existing product then is as part of enterprise analysis a business analyst perform the following activities identifies the business opportunities and business changes identifies stakeholders across business unit collects and prioritizes the business requirements define the business road map scope and exclusions determines whether the high level investment needed for the enterprise conduct feasibility study for any change for proposed conduct risk analysis and competitive analysis decides on build on build or buy strategy create return on investment business cases with proper justification and get the necessary approval from the sponsors let discuss one by one first is identifies the business opportunities and business changes that means if any enterprise is working then what are the different opportunities that is related to one enterprise why that opportunities is required to be changed means if one person is establishing one enterprise then what is the motive to establish that enterprise what the person is looking for then is as one enterprise is there different type of stakeholders are associated with that enterprise then find out which stakeholders are required by one enterprise 
then if number of requirements are there then to prioritize that requirement that which requirement is to be first handled then after that the second requirement will be considered then is business road map that means which strategy should be followed and which things to be added and which to be deleted that means which are uh, which thing is having some scope and which are in the exclusion section then is whether the high level investment needed for the enterprise that one person is going to establish an enterprise is this the right decision to invest in that business then the feasibility study is there if there are any sort of risk is there that is associated with the establishment of an enterprise then analysis of risk will be there then strategy to build and buy then is return on investment if you are going to invest something then what is the profit obviously one person is going to invest in some business one person will go for some benefit then only he will go with the business then the next uh, get the necessary approval from the sponsors if the customer is there sponsors are there the requirements are justified then there is re approval re uh, that is required from the sponsor side mm -hmm. then comes the business modeling it includes two form of projects one is creating something new or extension or change to something which already exists it is under the category of engineering that is called forward reengineering that is called reverse as is business or to be business let's study it what is forward engineering and reverse engineering if we go from the specification to design to the new system then it is called forward engineering if we backtrack all the system like if um, you are having one existing system and you will understand and transform it again then it is called the engineered system now comes the term as is and to be as is is your existing system which is existing fine that the system which is working right now as is is a term used to disclaim some implied warranties for an item being sold certain type of implied warranties must be specifically disclaimed such as implied warranty of title as is denote that the seller is selling and buyer is buying in whatever condition it presently exists and the buyer is accepting the item with all faults whether or not immediately apparent that means as a system is whatsoever is in your system whatsoever the warranty is associated with your system is there any flaw in your system that means error is accepted by the customer the customer is not going to dictate you that uh, this is the flaw in your system the customer is accepting is as such let's consider it by one example firstly let's understand to be then i will come to an example if any system is as is that means as a system is whatsoever the system the customer is accepting it to be is a business process model which is developed by applying improvement opportunities to the present business model that means as is model is available to you and you are going to enhance and you are going to change and you are going to improve that system by making some changes in that existing system is called to be system the to be business process model defines a concept of what the existing process should be that is it can identify if the current business process are effective or need improvement whether the your system is if uh, giving some effective solution or not or it requires some improvement consequently a business process reengineering exercise may be required that means we have to analyze it what are the changes are required in effect there are two type of business process model as is and to be these are very generalized question that you are having one existing system and you have to think upon what is your to be system and it may vary from the thinking of one person to the another may be possible i may think in one way and you may think in some another way 
I want some changes by this way or you want changes by that way. Let's find out with examples. So you are having one burger order, burger order process. When you are going to order some burger, then find out in the as is per process. The customer approaches cashier and he orders the burger. Customer will order the burger. Then there is a condition that want fries. If the customer says yes, then he will order the fries. If the customer will say he don't need fries, then the option is no. Then want drink is there. If the customer require any drink, then if we order it with yes, order drink, otherwise no, a customer will pay the cash. This is your as is model. If I say you have to pay your to be model by considering your as is model, then what could be your to be model? As you know, there are three things. One is burger, other is fries, one is drink. There could be a combo pack. Fine. In the to be burger order process, the customer approaches cashier and order combo meal. In the combo meal, it includes fries, it includes burger, it includes drink. Then customer will pay the cash. This is my approach that how I am thinking that to be processes. Your approach could be different. You can make a combo of combo of burger and fries will be there and the uh, customer can order the drink separately. That means if any problems come over to you as like this is as is process, you have to project it in the to be process, then your thinking approach may differ. Then comes the knowledge elicitation and analysis. This is systematic approach of capturing client's requirement, analysis them, and document the problem domain. There are two types of requirement here. One is called the good requirement, other is called the bad requirement. The good requirement will satisfy the customer and give a product which will be effective. That is called good requirement. Good requirement includes smart requirement. It includes specific, measurable, attainable, realizable, and T stands for testable, time bound, and traceable. If I abbreviate the smart, then S is for specific, M is for measurable, E is for attainable, R is for realizable, T is for testable, time bound, and traceable. The bad requirement will definitely give you a bad product. Then comes the categories of requirement. In the types, we are having two types. One is called the good type, other is called the bad type. If we go with the categories, we are having two types of categories. One is called the functional requirement, other is called the non-functional requirement. Functional requirement is mandatory for any enterprise. First thing is that it captures what the system is expected to do to depict functional requirement which two things are required one is the use case use case or and any prototype use case could be there any type of design system could be there any type of database could be there any type of uml class diagram sequence diagram any sort of diagram is there i have just written two uh, design phases one uh, Design module, one is use case, other is prototype. You may write anything here, which is related to your design strategy. Then comes the non-functional requirement. It captures how the system does what is expected to do with constraint and expected quality of services such as reliability, scalability, portability, usability, availability, security, and performance. These are all the non-functional requirements. It may vary from enterprise to enterprise, from organization to organization. Let's discuss in detail. Firstly, what is the difference between functional requirement and non-functional requirement? Functional requirement is product feature, but non-functional requirement is product property. Okay, first thing is, if I take an example, you're coming in college, 
like what is your main requirement you are coming for study here that is your functional requirement if i say that what is your non functional requirement if you are coming to your institute then the providing of infrastructure uh, providing of elevator is there elevator is not a part of your study if any elevator is provided to you it is a facility non functional requirement includes the facility that is extra available to you one thing is if i say security is there security is not part of your study it is the extra facility that is extra amenity that is provided to you that is not the part of your education system if i say books books are your functional requirement if i say your uh, chairs and tables these are your non functional requirement that is not included in your study fine then second is describe the action with which user work is concerned in the non functional describe the experience of the user while doing with the work it says describe the action with which the user work is concerned as i have given you example if you are studying in college then your main target is to study your work is to study the book but what the describe the experience of the user while doing the work experience like you want to sit and study so one chair or one bench is available to you that is the non functional requirement in the non uh, in the functional requirement a functional can be captured in use cases in the non functional non functional requirement a global constraint on a software system that results in development cost operation cost means extra facilities that is included and it requires some extra cost then in the functional requirement a behavior that can be analyzed by any sort of diagram sequence state chart uml use case prototype in the non functional it often software qualities in the functional requirement it can be traced to individual set of program in non functional usually cannot be implemented in a single module of a program it is not like if you are coming and and the security is only provided to you it is provided to all the students that means it is provided to the wholesome that is the non functional requirement is available to all the person that are associated with that organization coming with the detail in the non functional requirement first then i will come to the functional requirements later on it includes performing usability scalability interface operating life cycle and regulatory firstly i will come to the performance in the performance like constraints like throughput response time refresh rate under normal or peak load if any extra load is provided then how one system is working how one organization is working at peak time at load time it is then the performance will be get measured here then the usability effective use of localization and internet internationalization browser support and accessibility requirement then scalability resource utilization data storage requirement projected growth matrix could be used for better capacity planning and management interface it dictates the mechanism followed for application interoperability or integrity or integration with existing enterprise application operating include security maintainability reliability requirements life cycle include testability reusability portability installability then regulatory include legal all licensing requirement we will study in detail that what all it means let's start with the performance first i said there is some throughputs and uh, response rate refresh rate of any enterprise uh, of uh, any enterprise under some peak load fine it includes workload server software hosting enterprise application hardware of enterprise application performance requirement of any enterprise can be categorized into two perspective one is called the business perspective other is called the technology perspective 
business perspective includes all the type of users transactions their usage pattern and request arrival pattern that means at what time request is entertained these are required to measure the workload and throughput of the system technology perspective if we consider it then it captures the requirement like operating environment system and interfaces detail these are required to measure the resource utilization and response time of the system if any system is not working properly then there is technology flaw if a person is not giving response to entertain one you may say that uh, any type of request there is no any type of request then how it will be get entertained how the performance will be get measured this is in the business perspective if any thing which is at the user end which is in the hand of user in the hand of customer then it comes in the business perspective if anything which is under the software or hardware law that is the technology perspective then comes the usability an interface should be easy to learn how to use easy to remember that how to use user should not be required to custom uh, consult a manual each time they need to use a kitchen blender for instance as example is it whatsoever the product one company or one enterprise is going to make is easy to learn easy to adapt easy to understand it should be not like that one user should consult a manual each time that is the usability if you are going to use something you must be familiar with it It, the thing or the product should be user friendly otherwise you have to consult with the manual again and again you are going to use that product one or two time other than after you say it's very complex you can't use it right the usability requirement for an interface design should support the following from the perspective of its primary users first is efficiency of use that means goals are easy to accomplish quickly with few or no user errors if the user is going to use any product it should not give any error or can be used easily then intuitiveness the interface is easy to learn navigate buttons headings all should be specified if you have to play something then there should be mentioned that this is your play button or a particular sign of play should be there if you want to stop some things for you are going to assess some music system there must be mentioning that there is pause there is stop there is play if you are not aware of the button sign these are all the all the square buttons are present over your music system then you have to check by one by one that which button is working for which result right then is low perceived workload the interface is appears easy to use rather than demanding and frustrating it should be easy it should not be frustrating if we hold some the performance performance means how your system will work at the peak load but one thing is the performance can only be checked if any request is there then usability anything you are going to use related to your product it should be easy to use and handle then comes the scalability the ability of the system to sustain its performance with the growing number of users suppose the users are increasing but it may not affect your application sometimes we say that the server is down why server is down because most of the people have been logged in at the same time it slow down the process of the server that is this uh, checking of scalability to measure the scalability we are having two factors one is called the vertical scaling other is called the horizontal scaling let differentiate it vertical scaling says adding resources to a node that means a one system is available to and you are enhancing the capability of your one system you are enhancing the ram you are enhancing the processor or whatsoever the all the high end system will be get ready by single node right 
horizontal scaling is add node to a cluster that means the same type of approach is present to you but you are adding more system with the same configuration one approach is vertical scaling said you are enhancing your you are and adding more configuration in a single system but in a horizontal you are increasing your number of system in the vertical scaling increasing node capacity if you are giving some high end configuration to a system a single system you are increasing the node capacity load is unaffected when you are adding more system your load will be get decreased because it will be get scattered among all the nodes or all the system capacity is unaffected system complexity unaffected because you are with this single system you have to handle a system a single system you are, you are not in a complex mode but if you are working with more than one system you have to handle each and every system that means availability and throughput with increase complexity if we summarize it horizontal scaling means that you scale by adding more machine into your pool of resources that means you are adding more machines you are adding more computers but vertical scaling you are adding more power like cpu ram to an existing machine then comes the interface what are the events for communication to happen between the application what are the methods to facilitate communication between the application what is the structure in which data has to pass between the application what are the mechanism to handle error during communication whether the interface is crossing the technology domain these are all the parameter that are covered in the interface that means events what are the events methods what are the data is going to be passed when there is a communication between the application what are the errors could be there what are the technology domains are there these are all included in the interface then comes the operating how the system will operate how the system will communicate with the operators how many operators are required and their qualification what task will each operator are required to perform that means each and everything which is related to handle a system to operate a system that means which system will operate which are which operator will operate the system which assistant will be provided to the system any if any error message will be displayed then how to handle that error message how your screen will lo look like these are all the examples we can take another example here as different type of subjects are taught to you or teach to you by different teachers because they are depending upon their domain that which teacher can teach one subject similarly which operator we handle the particular problem which we under the operating non functional requirement it includes security the security is further divided into network security and application security then comes the maintainability then last comes the reliability let's discuss network security includes if any attacker or hacker will attack over your system then how will you prevent your system then there is some intrusion detection is there some firewall has been added there some other antiviruses has been installed into your system then is application security requirement in include authentication authorization and routing uh, authentication that value user is entering whether he is, is authorized to work or not there is auditing that one sort of checking is there if one person has entered into a system that then there is a checking that is called auditing maintainability of an application is related to measure the ease and speed with which system can be restored if there is failure in a system then how it easily overcome from that failure this is called maintainability rather than to throw a system if any system will we get failed then how it can be easily recovered it comes under the maintainability then reliability 
or those with which software must meet in order to perform a specific fun function under certain stated condition for a given period of time. Reliability means any type of condition is provided, your system will be working efficiently. This is called reliability. Then comes the life cycle, which is another part of your non-functional requirement. It includes testability, usability, portability, and installability. Last comes the regularity. Regularity means all the license restrictions and laws applicable to a product or business imposed by the government.